Hi, it's Alex. I want to talk about something that I've been hearing for years, and it's something that actually I feel pretty uncomfortable with, and I want to challenge it. And it's something having to do with gender. It's a strongly gendered comment that especially feminist women uh, make towards men, or make about men. And the general trend of this is that certain women say that men need to adjust their behaviors in order to make sure that women feel comfortable. And I don't have a problem with people saying that, especially if they're talking about egregious behaviors that overstep people's boundaries. So for say, example, like someone harassing someone else on the street. I think that's a really disrespectful thing. I don't want anyone to do it to anyone else ever. But sometimes people take this idea to an extreme, and I want to share an example of it. One of my friends recently shared an article on Facebook, and I'm going to put a link to this article in the description for this video, under the video, so if you want, you can read this article yourself. And I, I don't object to everything in this article. I think there's a lot of good stuff in it. But there was something in it that really didn't sit well with me. And it was talking about a situation where there's a man walking at night, and he notices there's a woman in front of him, and the woman is glancing back at him. And he's saying, I don't want to make this woman uncomfortable, so I'm going to start walking slower, and I'm going to take a different route home. And the person writing this article starts praising this man, and saying like, I'm so lucky to have men like you in my life. And I'm kind of shaking my head when I read this, because it's like, you're walking on a public street, and it's like, okay, it's good that you don't want to make someone else uncomfortable, but this seems to suggest like the level of, of extremeness of actually changing your route based on this other person who might feel uncomfortable with your presence, it just seems too extreme to me. And I think it's an example or an illustration of kind of taking it too far with adjusting your behaviors. I want to talk a little bit about how far I take it in a situation like that. Uh, when I'm walking alone at night, and I see another human being, regardless of that person's gender, I'm mindful of the fact that it's night, and the other person is alone, and they might be nervous or afraid. And I don't want to startle them, I don't want to do anything to make them feel unsafe. And so I think like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to sneak up on this person, even if it's by accident. Like, I want to make sure my steps or motion is audible, you can hear me approaching, so I'm not going to be startling a person. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to project body language that is non-threatening. I'm going to think about how I'm content, I don't need to interact with this person, I'm aware of their presence, uh, I don't want to impose on them in any way. And this is kind of what I'm thinking when I pass a stranger at night, and we're both alone, or when I'm walking behind someone. Uh, but I'm not going to go out of my way to avoid doing something that I'm already doing, walking somewhere, just because my mere presence might make another person uncomfortable. I think that is taking it too far. And I tend to apply this same kind of logic to other sorts of interactions. And I want to talk about why I think this general idea that is being expressed in this article, this idea that men need to like, bend over backwards to make sure that women don't possibly feel uncomfortable, and the idea that the mere presence of a male-bodied or male-presenting person is inherently threatening, I think that's really problematic. And I think that that idea is really anxiety-producing. And I think it's anxiety-producing in a way that actually can end up making women more uncomfortable. And I want to explain this. So, I care hugely about respecting other people's boundaries, and I always have. Like, if you look at things like street harassment, sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape, those are all things that I have never had any desire to do. And like, I get frustrated because 
the times that I have actually overstepped women's boundaries, it hasn't been because I don't care about them feeling comfortable. Like, I care about that so much. It's been because I care too much, and I'm getting sort of sucked into caring in a way that is like, not very healthy. Um, so for example, one problem that I struggle with is sometimes if I'm interacting with a person, I can get so caught up in my own head and my own thoughts that I'm not accurately reading another person's signals. And so if I'm worrying and I'm, I'm focusing on my own thoughts about, oh my god, I might make this person uncomfortable, that can actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy when I start misreading that person's social cues. Um, I think the same thing can play out with body language, including with strangers in public. Like, think about it like this. You're walking alone at night, and you see another person either coming towards you, or maybe they're walking behind you, and the person is pretty much minding their own business, they seem really relaxed and comfortable, they don't seem to want to interact with you at all from their body language. Like, they maybe glance at you and they've acknowledged your presence, but they seem pretty content and they're doing their own thing. You're probably going to feel relatively safe. You might still be like, okay, I need to keep an eye on this person, but it's like, it's not really that weird. Now picture this other scenario. You're walking alone at night, and there's someone either coming towards you, or like walking behind you, and the person seems nervous. They seem uncomfortable, and they seem sort of fidgety. They're looking at you a lot, like they're glancing at you. You're probably going to feel pretty uncomfortable. And it makes sense, because people often feel nervous and display it outwardly before committing crimes. So, this is a sort of adaptive response. It makes sense that people would feel more nervous in that situation. Now think back about the topic that this article is about. It's talking about men altering their behavior so that women feel comfortable, and it's telling men to focus a lot on this sort of introspection and possibly changing their behavior in these scenarios that are comparatively mild, like you're just minding your own business, walking home, and there's someone who just happens to be in front of you. Like, how often does that happen to me? Happens all the freaking time. So like, this is a very mundane situation. And I don't know about you, but if I get really into the mindset that this article was written in, I start feeling really nervous, and my body language becomes nervous. And it's because I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm just walking home, doing my own thing, I'm suddenly caught in my own head in these thoughts of like, oh my god, there's this person, I don't want to make her uncomfortable, she might be afraid of me, do I want to change what I'm doing, like, I want to make sure that I'm not making her uncomfortable, it's like, that thought process produces that behavior that makes people uncomfortable. That thought process produces the nervousness, the body language that expresses that anxiety, and it, it's probably going to make me glance at that person a lot more. And like, that's just a, a formula to make that person feel more uncomfortable. And like, so there's this irony in this thing, that this article is supposedly about like, men making women comfortable, and like, not threatening to women, but like, the way I see it, it seems totally backwards. Like, it seems to be advocating for men to get ex sort of caught up in this way of thinking that is highly likely to actually make women feel much less safe when they're walking alone at night, when they're alone in public. Like, I don't know, uh, that was my reaction to this whole piece. Didn't sit well with me. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Does this resonate with you? Does this seem plausible? Uh, I really wanted to start a discussion about this. Yeah, uh, I would encourage you to comment if you have anything to say, whether you agree or disagree. Thank you!